folks, welcome back. So, today we're doing a little AliExpress Geiger counter review. Um, I don't know, like a few months ago I fell into a little bit of a shopping spree. I, I just didn't check in a long time. I was in AliExpress looking around a bit and I just noticed like, you can buy Geiger counters for like less than 20 bucks meanwhile. Like, got me thinking and I needed some like birthday presents anyway, so voila. I bought five different models and I will compare them with my radio code 102 as a reference. This is a scintillator detector of course, it's not a Geiger Miller, but it's just the most precise one I have and I think this will make a good hard uh, comparison uh, item. Um, yeah, if you're in the mood for a little review video, um, join me. <laughs> well, I came up with this uh, kind of like point system test. Um, I want to run this test on all of the five cheap Geiger counters that we bought here uh, and also on the radio code 102. Just as a reference, this will be your reference instrument. So we have a HFS20 Geiger counter. Just give you a quick overview. We have a no-name aluminium housing Geiger counter. We have a no-name plastic housing Geiger counter. We have the HFS P3 Geiger counter. Really neat format. And we have the meanwhile maybe a little bit famous or infamous BR6. So those are the five ones we want to do some tests here. Uh, before we start the tests, I just want to talk a tiny bit about my experience with Geiger counters in the past and just about the general topic. Well, um, I think I'm fooling around with like Geiger counters for about almost 10 years now. I'm just an enthusiast, I'm a hobbyist, I'm, I'm just interested in this stuff and I'm a big nerd, obviously. Um, for a long time, or this was actually the first Geiger counter I bought, was the GMC 320 Plus uh, GQ brand, um, American made. These are really cool, I love this thing. Unfortunately, I broke it uh, a while back. I think I fried the motherboard and it's completely my fault. I modified the, the, the heck out of this thing and fooled around and tampered with it. So yeah, a bit sad that this one died. Um, I made some of my own, like with these uh, Arduino boards, um, DIY, semi DIY um, stuff you can buy. Um, these are pretty neat too. This was uh, were fun projects. Um, yeah, I have many big, small, and many different kinds of Geiger tubes. This one's my favorite one. The what is this? The SPT 11A. Um, yeah. The thing with these here is um, they also have Geiger Miller tubes inside of them, obviously, all of them, they do, I checked. Um, these are Chinese made Geiger Miller tubes in these devices and they're pretty comparable. Maybe they're a little bit less quality wise compared to, to the, the old Soviet Russian style ones, but uh, I mean they're working Geiger Miller tubes. For this low price range I think if you get a working Geiger, Geiger counter, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, that's so much for like my experience with Geiger counters and that kind of stuff. I have a lot of old videos. I built the cosmic ray detector with like two of these, for example. And um, please check my older videos if you're interested. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, just <laughs> join along if you're in the mood. <laughs> so one very last thing before we start the tests, I want to show you the Geiger tubes quick. So these three models have the small one, the J613. It's really small and, come on, photo, yeah. Uh, it has this like metal cathode inside. These are uh, interesting, pretty small. Then we got the J321 on the cheap plastic Geiger counter. And we have the J305 in the BR6. I think these two tubes are kind of comparable with the Chinese M4011. This came originally in my GQ Geiger counter. I have very good experience with this tube. And apparently this, these two are kind of copies of this one. So if they live up to the expectations, that's a good thing. Let's see. Also about the small tube. You know, th this is like a, a Soviet small tube, for example. This is a SI3BG. Maybe they're comparable. Maybe we'll do some DIY stuff later on. What I want to say is, you know, if you compare it to a big Geiger counter tube like this one here, this is the SI22G, and the small tube will just have a very low count rate. Especially in the lower range, in backgrounds, the, the small tubes will kind of suck probably. 
compared to a big tube like this or even a medium tube like these or like you know, this is the industry standard uh, SBM20. Yeah, this will be a problem. You, they're, they're just not sensitive on the lower ranges and it's a physical thing. It's just because they're small. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Okay, let's get started with the tests and I'm trying to hurry up a little bit otherwise this video will just take forever. So first item is the Radia Code 102. It has a cesium iodide crystal, is a scintillator obviously, cost around 300 bucks. So first test, shake test. Cool, nothing seems to change. General impression, build quality is amazing, Radia Code is great. Does it click? Does it have a sound? Yes. And a nice one. Um, firmware, data, menu quality, data logging. Look at the app. I don't have to show you this in detail. This, so yeah. Radio code is cool. It does all these here. So menu quality too. Data logging, yes. So cool. Radio code. Um, I think this will cross all the points. <laughs> so let's test it on some radioactive sources. First test will be the strong source. My strongest source I have right now is this radium painted uh, Swiss army compass. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Yeah, immediate response. Yeah, this is great. Checks all. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So let's go to the medium source. One small thing to mention, um, strong source will give one point, medium source will give two points and weak source will give three points because I think this kind of makes sense. So the medium source is a piece of uranium glass. It's decent, but it's not extremely uh, hot. This is comparable to some weaker uranium ore you could find out in nature. So let's see how fast the radio code is on this. Immediate. So yeah, okay. Also check this one, medium source gets two points. So for a weak source, I want to try some K40. So this is a bucket of uh, plant ash from my wood stove. And I also have some bath salts that have a high uh, potassium uh, quantity. I was able in the past to measure this stuff with the M4011 tube, also with the SPT11A. And I think this is a good weak check source. It's a difficult one, but uh, yeah, we'll find out. Uh, also, we need some time for this. I will give every counter 10 minutes in here, put the radio code into the plant ash, and also put some bath salt on top, just for, you know, <laughs> yeah. Let's give this 10 minutes and then we'll see if it picks up something. Okay, let's see if this worked out. Um, well, it went up from 0 0.06 to about 0 0.09, which is a good sign. Guess we have something here. Let's check the app quick. Yeah, oh, I have to go out a bit. There is an increase, I would say. Um, maybe check the spectrum. Yeah, there's a K40 line, look. So there's clearly something here, but it is very weak. So this will be a difficult uh, test source. But I would say radio codes um, successfully made the tests. The weak source will give it three points for this. So then we also have the precision um, rating left, which I will not do on the radio code because this will be a reference for precision. Um, this is really precise. I trust this. I cross-checked it with other devices. So we'll also say precision tests uh, successfully passed. We have an X-ray test left and also an ultraviolet test. The ultraviolet will not give any points. It's just good to know if your tubes are sensitive to UV or not. But X-rays will be interesting, but we'll do these with all the counters together in the end. So first test, uh, test successfully done. One last thing I forgot to mention. K40 is not a pure beta source. It has about 9% gamma emission. I don't have a pure beta source. This is best I can do. Um, yeah, just wanted to mention that. So first Geiger counter to test is the HFS P3. Um, really neat format. I love the design. Uh, it will immediately, immediately get points for that. 
it's the exact size uh, diameter of a Sharpie, very cool format. Um, this has the small J613 Geiger Miller tube, cost me about $30. Um, check test. Yeah, we already passed the tests actually, I'll try to show you the design a little bit. The menu quality is pretty neat too, it's simple, but you get dose, average, maximum, and back to dose rate. You can do a few more things if you press on this long enough, I think. Maybe you have to press both buttons. Yeah, but that's kind of it for the options. But uh, actually, this passed the shake test. General impression is good. Does it click? It does not, uh, sadly. Menu quality, I like it. And you can, data logging, I will just say, if it gets an average and a max count that you can look up, that's already worth something. You can do a little bit of like science or experiments with that. Unfortunately, none of those have uh, USB to computer access. That's actually a thing I'm looking for, but uh, yeah, sadly, no. But we already passed the first few tests. Uh, cool, let's move on to the um, check sources. Okay, let's see how it handles uh, radium. Put this on top. So it's not immediate. Ah, okay, not bad. And it has a, a inbuilt alarm. At least you hear that. You can put, there is a setting for alarm somewhere. But actually, pretty cool. I would say this passed the strong sensitivity test. So how will it deal with the uranium glass, medium source? Okay, not as immediate as before. Do we actually see something? Yeah, it's at 0 0.3 microsievert now, it's slowly rising. Um, I, maybe we can look at this a little bit better. Yeah, I think here you can see it. 0 0.5, I think at 0 0.6 the alarm should go off. Um, yeah, it's working, it's a bit slow. I'll just give it one point for the medium source. Yeah. Okay, this will be a tricky one. Um, let's just see where it's now. Um, yeah, those rate 0 0.09. We have an average of, oh, come on focus. Well, the average is 0 0.08, still pretty low. The max, I think, is interesting. Now we're at 0 0.2. Let's put it in for 10 minutes. See what happens. So it's been almost 10 minutes and I'm very curious what we have here. Yeah, it went up a little bit. Not much, maximum 0 0.31. I'll just give it one point for the weak source. So for the lower precision kind of test, um, we'll use the uranium glass. I think if I go weaker source-wise, some of them will just fail and will be boring. Um, I just want to see how much the millisieverts per hour um, add up, you know, how far they're apart. Again, radar code is a reference and I'll give this a minute or so and yeah, well, let's see. Okay, the alarm is sounding of the, the small Geiger counter. Uh, radio code is showing me 0 0.2324. The Geiger counter is at two, uh, two millisieverts per hour. Okay, yeah, this is pretty far apart. I'm not sure what we'll do with this. Let's see. Uh, let's check it with a strong source, compare that. One thing I noticed with the small tube Geiger counters is they're just really not that precise on the lower ranges. I think it just could be because of the tube. Um, we'll try some uranium ore. This is a, has like a layer of pitch blend on top. And this will be our strong source. I think it's just easier to put stuff on top also. Hope I get this to line up. Yeah, let's give it a minute too, see what happens. I had to rearrange this stuff a little bit, but uh, I hope you can see it. Um, 12 on the Geiger counter and like four and a half on the radio code. So this just shows like three times more on both. I, maybe the tube gets saturated, I, I don't know. Not very precise. So failed both tests, unfortunately. Um, yeah, let's just move on to the next one. I still like this thing. This is a per personal favorite of mine. <laughs> 
So next one up is the HFS-20. Um, it has the same small J613 Geiger-Miller tube, cost me about $35. It clicks, we can also check that box, shake test. Yeah, okay, nothing really seems to happen. Yeah, this is built pretty well. The tube is inside here, which I don't like. They didn't put any holes. That's maybe something I will improve. Um, it's good to know where the tube is. It's somewhere in the manual, they tell you. But they could have made a marking on the housing. Yeah, some small criticisms. But in general, this is pretty neat. Nice format. Uh, yep. Yeah, it actually clicks. That's cool too. Um, so let's look at the menu. Well, it's it's okay. You can do like average and maximum to you can actually let make recordings But you can't extract it with USB. Why this annoys me a little bit. This would be a really cool product But there's no option to connect the computer um, It clicks which is a good sign Yeah, okay. I just I don't like the look of the menu that much But I guess that's personal taste Let's see how it handles radium. Okay, cool. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's check the medium source, uh, uranium glass. Try to keep too close to the glass. Yeah, it's not even beeping. Not so great. Maybe make some holes in the casing, you know, even plastic blow. If it's sensitive to betos, which is a bit sketchy, make some holes, it would be much more sensitive to betos that way. Yeah, let's give it one point. It's a, it's a bit slow for my taste. Let's take a quick look how to set this up, because it's a bit weird. So you have to go to the menu and then you go to schedule. Um, we'll have like a start delay of 10 seconds, that's okay. Measurement time of 24 hours is a lot, I don't think we'll do that. Okay, I think I have it at 10 minutes now. So, okay, start timing. Start timing, yes. Return, so we'll measure in 10 seconds. So we got it in, in the potassium uh, check source. Let's come back in in a few minutes and see if something happens. Okay, let's take a look. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed with this one. Maybe it's personal taste. It failed the weak source test, I would say. There's nothing really happening. We can check the record. So yeah, we have some kind of recording. Um, we only can see the maximum in the recording, which is annoying too, and it's nothing above background really. So failed this test. Let's move on to precision. So again, I'll compare it with the radio code in the uranium glass. Uh, one thing I think would ha could be happening too is maybe the tube doesn't have high enough voltage or something. I prefer the small one to, to this one, so buy this one. It's even a bit cheaper. It's cooler than the other one. So I, I had it in there for a minute or two and it, it's really slowly going up the count rate, somehow really low count rate. 0 0.8 and well radio code has a bit more I always forget 0 0.3 ah let's say failed okay it seems to like the pitch blend uh, we're at like around four here and around eight here still like 50 percent difference not bad, but still I say this failed. I want this to be closer, so yeah. Well, the next two ones will be frustrating, I can tell you that already. Let's turn it on. This is the really this is the cheapest one at $14, no name plastic. It has the little bit bigger J321 Geiger Miller tube. First impression, it makes a horrible sound. I I have I'll hold it to the microphone quick. This is not like the count rate, these are just some capacitors freaking out inside, so not a good sign. Let's do the shake. Oh, horrible. You hear that? I can tell you what this is. This this time I don't trip the alarm. It did trip the alarm in the past when I did that. That's the battery um, wiggling around in the housing because, like, I have another one here. The battery is just like 
glued on cheaply. The whole housing thing here, it's, uh, I don't have the other side, but I mean, this is an air conditioning controller from the 90s or something. It's, it's bad. It's really bad. Uh, yeah, failed to shake test, failed to general impression. You know, the board is not that bad. I, I think this looks decent, honestly. You, this could be a good product if you would put 10 or 20% more effort inside. Horrible. On this one, I even had to solder on the, 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 the clip because it was loose, it was giving me bad uh, contact. So yeah, don't like this one, honestly. I really don't. I wanna get over with this thing. Actually, if you press the power button, you can have an average. You have ACC, whatever that means, and you have even like a graph, but it, it's not picking up anything, so there's nothing on the graph. I'll give it one point for data logging, but nothing for the rest. <laughs> like seriously, the box is the best thing about this thing. Also, it's not really clear where the tube is, but we'll figure it out. Let's see how this handles radium. It doesn't at all, obviously. This is really bad. I mean. Give me a break, seriously? You wanna be a Geiger counter? If we hit it? Nothing. <laughs> Let's just try another one. I got like three of those. But it already failed the test in my opinion, come on. Both? Not, like, I mean this shows 0 0.00, this is at least 0 0.1. Nothing. On my strongest source, give me a break. It clicked once. Oh. Yeah, definitely failed that test. Honestly, uh, this is pointless. Did your uh, medium source check quick? It won't pick up anything in the uranium glass, I'm pretty sure. I won't do the, the K40 test with the ash, this is pointless. This this is really bad product. It, it could be a good one, just put like 20% more effort inside. I mean, I would pay 20 bucks for this if it would work properly and be built properly, but yeah, pity. It's actually picking up something, maybe, but no, no, this won't give any point, points, no. Maybe it'll get some x-rays if we blast it later on, let's see about that, but uh, low range, high range precision test, also, this is pointless, I won't do this with this device, it's, it's a waste of time. Made one point for data logging, fuck it, seriously. <laughs> so next one up is the no name aluminium housing Geiger counter thingy, this one's a frustrating one too, of course I've played around with these a bit has the same small tube like the others, costs $25, was like the second cheapest one. Really, maybe don't buy the cheapest and the second cheapest one, buy the third cheapest one, they're better. I don't know, that's my conclusion. Shake tests, okay for now. It also did trip the alarm in the past though. Yeah. Hey, build quality is not so bad. I, even the design, I kind of like how it looks. Even the menu is decent, um, you can do a lot of stuff. This one here is nice, for example, that's actually what I want to see. There's even a graph, so yeah, there's, there's actually like logging capabilities. Hey, not bad, you can do more stuff. I think I'll just leave it here, there is also the noise thingy. Yeah, it has alarms, but it doesn't click. Yeah, that's like your alarm stuff. This is pretty decent, actually. So I guess this one is a particularly good made one. I had some issues with another one. I got like two of these. I think this is the one I had an issue with. Take a look at the inside. It's, it's pretty well made. It's not a bad board, but I think this has the voltage problem too. I think it's just doesn't have enough voltage on the tube to really work properly but we'll find out um, right now we'll do the test sources uh, right now okay let's see how it handles the strong source uh, one thing i just figured out if you press this button it goes on like a pause mode so it keeps the value this just confused me a bit so i'll do the tests uh, again let's see how it handles the radium 
The tube is behind the screen, so the position should be okay. Pretty slow on the radium, honestly. It should go faster. There's something happening. Okay, alarm. Well, there is a bit of a firmware issue or something. It's It's been like a minute or two since I took it off the radium clock. It just goes down really slowly. Even if you restart, it doesn't help. I'll just wait another few minutes, then we'll put it into the uranium gland. Okay, medium source tests. Let's see. I guess this needs a moment. Give it a minute. Nothing really happens. Let's give it a last chance. Sometimes the floor of the uranium glass is a bit easier to pick up. Well, nothing really, as you see. So, failed. It can, can pick up strong stuff, medium stuff, not so much. Maybe it would help if the, the tube would be open, like cut some holes in here or so. I, I guess it would be decent then. But I still think this has a bit of a voltage problem. The tube maybe just doesn't have enough voltage. It's a pity, it's well made, but somehow still kind of shitty. I don't know. Uh, also, we don't have to do the weak test, uh, and we'll see what it does with the x-rays later on. Let's move on. Okay, let's do a quick high range test with the uranium ore. Sensitivity test. Of course, we compare it with the radio code. Honestly, I kind of like this. It passed the high range um, precision test. It's pretty close to the radio code. Not not perfect, but it's the best from the ones we tested so far. Well, it's been in there with the radio code for a moment and um, nah, it's not really uh, comparing. So I'll, I'll say it failed the low range test. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is the last one actually for today, the BR6. Has a nice uh, intro screen. Somebody really likes Ernest Rutherford, apparently. Um, cost me $27. I think this been around for some time on the internet. I've seen this for a while. Never really got one. Um, honestly, this is one of my favorites. I think this is the small one. Let's do a quick shake test. Seems to be fine. It's a bit bulky. It's bigger than the other ones. It's a bit more like a traditional Geiger counter, I guess. And the menu is very simple, you can't do a whole lot, but honestly, I kind of like it. I, I like this counter. And it actually has a click. We'll hear that later better. It's a little bit on the quiet side for my taste, but it has a click. This is cool. So for the menu quality, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can turn on and off the sound. This here. Oh, it just resets your uh, your curve down here. There is like a curve and it goes on for a minute or two, but that's all like backlog data you get. You can't really find it anywhere else. So no points for data logging, even though I like the curve. This is actually pretty neat, but I won't give it a point here, maybe half point. Menu quality, I will give a point. It's very simple, but it's all it's a simple Geiger counter and it does its job so what do you want <laughs> one cool thing I want to mention quick this does not have like a lithium-ion battery like all the others this actually has old-school AA batteries and I like this feature about uh, this Geiger counter the point is with your lithium-ion batteries they will go bad at some point you they're rechargeable and everything cool but they will go bad at some point easier you just can exchange them so if you buy a Geiger counter and you keep it for years in a shelf you never use it maybe this is a good option for you so we have a little bit of a trend line going on let's bring in the compass yeah this is pretty immediately cool passed okay let it calm down a little bit I like the click sounds, but they're a bit on the quiet side, in my opinion. They could be a bit louder. Check with the... Oh wow, this is nice. Immediately. 
So I let this idle a little bit. Um, you have to wait a, a little bit till the average comes out, takes a few minutes. Let's see how it handles the potassium. I think we should uh, watch the curve. I think if something happens, we'll see it here first. But yeah, this will need a few minutes. So this is, is something, it's not bad. I'll give it one out of three points for the weak source. I think there is a slight increase visible. One factor that could be better on this is the tube is really far back. You know, it's, it's like back here in the device. If it would be more on front, this would be more sensitive too. I will later on, after we do all the checks, I want to put uh, my SPT11A into this thing. Uh, I, I think this will be a good combination. So let's do the precision tests. I really like this thing. I have to say, this is my favorite beside the small one. Let's see how precise it is. Not bad for a start. Well, eh, it's not that bad. I mean, the radio code normally showed more something like four. The, the, the rock is a bit too small to put both on top. I would give it a almost past. Uh, let's check, check it with the uranium glass. Okay, this barely fits into here. Kind of. I guess we'll do it this way. Give it a minute. Well, yeah, also interesting. I mean, radio code showed 0 0.3 before. This one is at 2.5, it's pretty high. Um, maybe it picks up the betas better. I think this is actually able to pick up beta pretty easily. Also a plus, so not a perfect test. Uh, I don't know. I'll give it one point out of two for the range, for the precision tests, for sure. Yeah, I'm not completely sure what to do with the precision tests, but I thought I'll just give it one out of two points. So, cool, let's move on. Well, let's do the x-ray test with all of the counters together. Um, I don't want to get into details. I have a small x-ray source here. It's pretty weak. A big shout out to Tested to Destruction. He has an amazing channel. If you're into high voltage stuff, Tesla coils, all kinds of neat, Really great guy, really great channel. It's an x-ray source, it's weak, it's a dentist's head, it's, it has a very weak power supply, um, there's nobody in the vicinity, we're pretty safe here. I'll blast this stuff here with x-rays quick and we'll see if they pick something up. I'll zoom in a little bit and maybe change the lights. Uh, just a moment, action will be here soon. That worked apparently. <laughs> Let's give it a look. Okay, I'll give it one last shot uh, with the lights on. Cool. All of them except one. So one very last test for today, even though this won't give any points. Um, I read in some forums that uh, these Chinese Geiger Miller tubes sometimes have some problems with uh, ultraviolet light. They can detect UV, which can off your results, so it's not something you want. But honestly, there's an easy solution for this. You just can tape them off or put black paper around them. In my BR6, there was a shrink sleeve around the tube. When I got it, I just took it off because I wanted to fool around with the tube. This thing back here is an ultraviolet C light bulb, so the nasty UV that gives you skin cancer and ruins your eyes and stuff. I think it's from a water uh, treatment plant, like for disinfecting water. Um, let's just give this a try. The BR6 actually picks it up pretty fast, pretty obvious. Yep, so yeah, makes sense to tape this tube. Um, this one's from the small one. Not sure if you can see, there's not much happening. I'm not sure about the small tubes. I don't think they're very UV sensitive. Well, we have another small one. Test this one quick. Nothing. So the small ones seem to be okay. 
Then we have this really the cheap thing here that doesn't work at all. Maybe this too picks it up, but the counter doesn't really do anything. Yeah, just good to know. That was our last test. Um, now we'll do some calculations and we'll figure out which one won. And the winner is... The BR6. Yay! <laughs> So, just want to give you a very quick overview about the tests. So, the radio code was a reference. It made 14 out of 14 points, of course. It also costs almost $300. So, it's 10 times more expensive than all the counters we checked here. So, first prize, first uh, place goes to the BR6 with 10 plus points. I really like this thing. It's sensitive, has an okay menu, it's a bit limited. Um, good build quality. I like the battery idea. This is really neat. Um, one thing I noticed that uh, at the low range sensitivity test with the uranium glass, hey, it could be that we picked up some ultraviolet light there. So maybe that's even a reason to give it a point more. I'm too lazy to do the tests again, but I will give it a 10 plus out of 14 for the BR6. Second place is the HFS P3, also personal favorite of mine. I love the design and the format. I think it's really neat. Very good build quality, it does what it should do. Um, it's not so sensitive on the lower ranges, but what do you expect from something this size? So, eight plus points for for the small one, the HFS P3. Uh, on third place, we have the HFS 20 at $35. It's a bit more expensive than it. Actually, it's the most expensive one, which is not really justified, honestly. But uh, it's not bad, it's a decent Geiger counter. Could be a bit more sensitive, in my opinion. Could have a better menu and maybe some holes for the tube. Only that. So, 8 points for the HFS 20. So, now we go to the losing side. <laughs> the no-name aluminium Geiger counter. Which, it's not a bad product per se, but they just made some mistakes. I, I think that the voltage on the tube has an issue. I have to check that in the future. And make some holes in the casing. Then it would be a great product, honestly. Like, yeah. And last but very least, the plastic cheapo bullshit Geiger counter <laughs> that doesn't work. I bought three of them. All three don't work out of the box. That's really not good. Um, I gave it two more points than yesterday when I made the tests. Just because I did actually notice it has a click. If it would measure something, then it would actually click. Also, the menu is not that bad than I thought first. I was ranting a little bit, so I gave it three points instead of one, which is still a really shitty result. Don't buy this, really don't. Um, yeah, so much for the conclusion. Well, that's it for, for this video. Um, thanks for joining me so long. I know this took a bit uh, longer than usual, but uh, it's five products. I mean, how many products can you review in 40 minutes? Um, no, really, I hope you appreciated this. Maybe I could help some people and it's, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's cool. Like maybe don't spend $14, maybe just spend $30 on a Geiger counter and you actually get something proper that actually works. I mean, I think this is pretty cool. This opens up the whole field to a whole lot of new hobbyists too that are on the lower budget scale, you know. If I could have bought something like this for 30 bucks 10 years ago, would be cool. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's uh, basically the conclusion. Um, few small things. I want to give a, a, a little shout out to another YouTube channel that I discovered recently. It's called Studio326. Very cool YouTuber. Um, he does a lot of reviews too of cheap Geiger counters. I think the only ones we have in common is the BR6 and the radio code. Um, so he has a whole lot of other reviews of other cheap Geiger counters if yours is not in my um, sample here. So maybe check out his channel. In general, really cool channel, like check him out. Um, one other thing, um, I want to make another video, but I have to make it a separate video where I will pimp my BR6. I want to do some changes here, modify this, make it better. And maybe I'll do some smaller modifications on, on these here too. But that will be a separate video. Um, very last thing for this video, I have a question to all of you, to the community. Because I'm still struggling a little bit. 
actually my problem right now is the the GQ that I had that I destroyed the GMC 320. This thing could do very easy data logging. Like you just could put a USB cable and get like uh, Excel data on your laptop on your computer and actually make graphs and stuff like like proper data recording. None of these can do that. If you know uh, a cheap or an affordable Geiger counter, let's say below $60 or so, that can actually do data logging, that you just can plug in a USB cable, get your data on the computer. Please let me know, that would really help me. I would like to have a, a logging Geiger counter again, like a cheap one, not the, I know these can do this, uh, the radio code, but I, I want something cheap that I can log, maybe put on a high altitude balloon or something like that. Yeah, my last question for, for you folks out there. Maybe somebody knows something. Um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.